Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you about the easiest $1,000 stimulus payment you could receive from the government. On Tuesday, April the 22nd, the House gives final passage to the $484 billion coronavirus relief bill. So I'm going to be focusing specifically on one aspect of this bill. So one of this money, $60 billion is giving in loans and grants for the Small Business Administration Disaster Relief Fund. And this is the money that I'm going to be talking about. Now, it says here $60 billion in loans and grants. Specifically, of the $60 billion, $50 billion in loans and $10 billion in grants. And what does a grant mean? A grant means you don't have to pay this money back. So let's see who would qualify under that $10 billion. So what should you do? You should go to the SBA.gov. Do not Google it, just type SBA.gov to make sure you go to the government site because you're gonna be inputting sensitive business and personal information. So you wanna make sure there's no efficient site out there that's collecting this information. Once you go to the SBA.gov, you wanna click on the funding programs. And under funding programs, under loans, coronavirus relief options, click there. Then from this site, scroll down from this page and click on the EIDL loan advance $10,000 to be more specific. This loan advance will provide up to 10,000 of economic relief to businesses that are currently experiencing temporary difficulties. Click on that because I'm showing you the grant part of it. So it's called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Emergency Advance. Although it says a loan, part of it is a loan, part of it is an advance. I don't know why they don't call the advance a grant, but that's fine. What they mean by advance, it's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. Okay. So the first thing you're going to see, there's a notice lapse and appropriation. In the government language, lapse and appropriation means they don't have money for this program now. And the reason they don't, because they had money for it, everybody, everyone apply, and you don't want to miss this time, and the money is gone. However, as I showed you earlier, that the government did replenish this fund with the $448 billion, uh, new legislation of which 60 went to this program, of which of the 60, 10 will be grants. So here's the overview. And notice here, this loan advance will not be repaid. So if you apply for the $10,000 for the economic injury disaster loan advance, you could receive up to $10,000. I'm going to tell you real quick, you know, whether you qualify for the 10,000, but at least you can get a thousand. I'm going to talk about the eligibility in a moment but notice if you get this 1000 or 2000 or 3000 depending if you have employees at your business the loan advance will not have to be repaid notice here the advance doesn't have to be repaid okay although it says a loan it's not you don't have to repay it now if you got a loan from the 50 billion which is there's an interest in, involved and other factors then you have to repay those loans but i'm not talking about the loan if i have to talk about loan i have to do a separate recording for that so let's see who's eligible because they're pretty they're pretty generous this time about who's eligible for this money okay so the sba economic uh, injury disaster loan provide vital economic support to small businesses to help them overcome the temporary loss of revenue this program is is for any small business notice any small business with less than 500 employees this include notice sole proprietorship you don't have to be a C corporation. You don't have to be, to be an LLC. You don't have to have an official business. As long as you prepare the Schedule C in the past and you have a gig on the side and you are working, then you're a sole proprietor. Therefore, you qualify. If you drive an Uber, if you drive a Lyft, you're a sole proprietor. Actually, you're an independent contractor. You qualify. So you qualify under independent contractor. And self-employed person, as long as you are receiving money, practically, they said, apply and we'll give you the money. Now, it's per employee, per one employee. So if you are a self-employed, you are considered your employee. If you're an independent contractor, you are considered an employee. If you're a sole proprietorship, you're considered an employee. Now, if you and your spouse are working, then you have two employees. Therefore, you, you would qualify for $2,000. Also, private nonprofit organization qualify, veterans organization qualify. So notice they're pretty liberal when it comes to that. So once again, I'm talking about the advance, not the loan, because there's advance and there's loan. I want to get you the grant, so you don't have to pay it back. You don't have to worry about it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what type of what type of information you will need in order to complete this application because the application is not available yet, and that's why what you should do you should bookmark the site, 
I will have the site in the description as well. You should bookmark the site and keep checking the site. So once the application is up and running, complete the application. Make sure you have your banking information, so on and so forth. But let me show you real quick, what information are they be asking you about when it comes to this application? So the first question it's going to be something to the effect that check the box that you are applying as an independent contractor or a sole proprietorship because this is the this is who they are helping they are helping you um, use your social security if you're applying as an individual independent contractor now you may not have an EIN because you know you don't have an official business but it's an independent contractor therefore you would use your social security the form will ask you about your gross revenue for the past 12 months as an independent contractor and cost of goods sold now you can estimate what what's going to be okay you can estimate this based on what happened in 2019 cost of goods sold means expenses incurred in the process of providing the goods and the services as a freelancer or an, as an independent contractor you just have to tell them what was your revenue and what's your cost they're going to ask you is your biz who owns the business and you're going to have to put 100 percent owner because as a sole proprietorship it means you have one owner so if you're a partner in some partnership this is not your application because if you're a partner you cannot own the business 100 percent 100 percent it will also ask you the date the business was established this date is uh, this is the date you started doing freelance or independent work make sure you put something before january 1st 3031 you don't have to be the exact date just estimate because when you started this business you were not planning to apply at the SBA. So you just put an estimate when you started the beginning of the month, for example, August 2018, August 2019, whatever. The form obviously is going to ask you about your bank information to to direct your to the to make the direct deposit. Make sure you have a copy of your check, your routing number, bank information. I would double and triple check this information just to make sure you're going to get the money. Okay? You'll need the name of the bank and the routing number. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a sample check to show you where to look for this information in case you are not familiar with, with it. For your business phone, it's okay to put your cell number. It's not a big deal. Um, is your business owned by another entity? And the answer should be no. Again, if you're a sole proprietorship, if you're an independent contractor, that's who they are trying to help. You cannot be owned by someone else. In other words, you have to answer no. If you answer yes, then you don't qualify under this program. When the form asks you for the business name, just enter your individual name if you don't have a business name. For example, I have Farhad Accounting Lectures. I don't use my name because I that's what I put on my Schedule C. This is what I'm going to be using. You can ignore the question if anyone assisted you in completing this application, unless in fact you're getting help. I'm not sure if this is help. If you're, if, if you're viewing this, I'm not really helping you complete the application. I'm giving you information. But again, I'm, you know, uh, this is a legal mumbo jumbo. Why would they ask it? I'm not sure. But, you know, this is, uh, by the way, this video is for informational purposes, not intended as an advice. This way I cover myself. Make sure to check the box that says you want to apply for the $10,000 grant. Look, it's a $10,000, although it will only be $1,000 for independent contractor, but you check that box. It says $10,000, so they know you want the money. The application should take 10 to 15 minutes to fill it. That's the estimate based on the prior experience um, with the first round. It's worth it. Go ahead and complete it. I'm going to show you a sample check to tell you where you should get your routing number, routing number, and bank account number. Once again, I will double and triple check those because you want... You don't want to give them the wrong number so you don't get the money. So this is a sample check and this is where you found your routing number. It should be nine digit, three, six, nine. And this is your account number. Make sure don't include the last digits. There should be in parentheses because those correspond with the check number. Now, th I'll tell you what I do. When I was an auditor, here's what I would do to make sure I'm, I'm inputting this information correctly because I do a lot of mistakes like this. I will add up my routing number. For example, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So I'll just make sure the total equal to a certain number. Then I will add it again to make sure I input the right information. So make sure you put the right routing information, the right account number. And do you have to pay this grant back? I know I told you it's a grant. I'm just going to re-emphasize this point because a lot of people think, well, it sounds like a loan. It's not. No interest is required. No payment back is required. It's your money. Make sure you apply for it. The government is trying to help you during this coronavirus days. Take advantage of it. Uh, what I ask you to do is subscribe to the channel. So when I have a new update, especially if you're an accounting student or or a CPA candidate. That's what I do. I provide lessons, but I'm trying to help as much as possible. Stay safe. 
Good luck. And if you know of a virtual haircut, please let me know. I need one so bad.